Well, hey there, rock stars. Sarah Rack and Robbins here, coming to you live with another episode of the Rock Star Recruiting School Live. Again, this is Sarah Robbins. I'm so glad to be here with you today. As uh, people start streaming in, go ahead and share with me below who you are, where you're tuning in from, I would love to hear. And um, if it's your first time here today, go ahead and comment below with the number one. Um, I would love to see our first timers that are here today as well. Remember, you can share for a chance to get a shout. Uh, go ahead and share this on your team pages because remember, the more who know, the greater your business will grow. Um, a rising tide lifts all ships in this business as well. Uh, today on our live session, hey Katie, it's your first time here. I'm so glad that you're here with us today. Um, she put in a number one. She's a first timer. Andrea as well. Glad to have you. Um, see so many cool people tuning in today. I'm so excited. Today on our episode, we're going to be talking about what to do when you're going through and how to keep on keeping on. Because let's face it, how many of you at some point while you're building your business, you've gone through something hard? If that's you today and you can totally relate, drop in a number two in the comments below for me too, meaning you bet built your business and at some point during building your business, you've had some sort of distraction or some sort of a hard thing that you've gone through. Hey Keith, good to see you. I see so many cool friends tuning in. Good to see you guys. Um, drop in a number two. If you've had to go through something hard, something challenging, maybe it was a distraction, it was a disappointment, it was some sort of delay, or even maybe something devastating. You've gone through something really challenging during the time that you've built your business. You know, even the Bible tells us that no person, no one person is ever going to be exempt from problems in life. So the chances are, if you're alive and you're breathing, you've gone through something tough or you will go through something tough in life. Kim said she actually went through two cancers. That is just incredible. I mean, words can't even describe, right? The hard things that she had to go through physically, emotionally, and mentally. And Kim, we're going to be continuing to pray for your health. Um... But you know, I um, have just seen so many amazing stories as it relates to resilience and really what this business has done for people during their tough time. I see so many people here that you're tuning in, you can say, I can totally relate. One of the coolest stories, I actually tell this story in my book, Rock Your Network Marketing Business, um, is I think one of the coolest stories in our profession, actually, in network marketing is a story of my business partner, Emily Pinata Glue. And I want to give a shout out to Emily and her husband, Tim, if they're watching, and Team Empower, too. Um, Emily's one of the top leaders on our team. She is a car driver. Um, she has built a career income with our business, and she has just done incredible things. She's an incredible power partner, an amazing friend, and I actually tell of her story in her book um, that my sister Emily actually recruited her for me. Back in the day before my sister joined me, she said no to me for 10 years, so don't get offended if somebody tells you no, especially if you love them. She said no to me for 10 years, but she said, you know what, I'll help you with some referrals because I told her I'd give her some free product or 50 bucks here and there for referrals, a little finder's fee. And um, she put something out on Facebook. It found Emily Pinata Glue, who went to my gym, but we didn't know each other. And um, Emily said, I'm interested in the business, tell me more, came to a meeting, signed up, ended up being one of the top power partners on my team, but also a top leader in our company. Well, she's gone on to build an amazing organization, as I shared, and I always joke and say that was the best $50 I ever spent, because not only did it find a top leader, but also a best friend. And by the way, 10 years later, my sister did end up joining me, her timing changed. But Emily's got a really powerful story. Um, during the time that I knew her and during her, the time that she was in our business, her husband, Tim, actually ended up having to have emergency brain surgery. Now, um, not once did he go through something terrible and trying and tragic, but actually twice. And Tim's in the automotive industry and Emily is a nurse. And um, both of them during this time, as you can imagine, Tim couldn't drive and because of his condition, he was not allowed to drive. And both of them had to obviously take time off of work and they have two young children. And, um, you know, I get choked up telling their story because they are two just powerful, amazing people. In fact, um, during the time of the second tragedy, the second major incident that their family went through, um, Emily and her team were in their final month, their third final month of car qualifications. 
And um, you know, it was amazing. Behind the scene, her team didn't even know what was going on. Emily just told me, hey, this is going on. And I don't want them to get distracted. I don't want them to get worried. I don't want them worrying about us. You know, um, I've, I've, you know, uh, empowered some leaders on my team. They're going to be cheering people on and sharing. And Sarah, if you can do the same, she reached out to me being your upline. And um, that team, man, they hit it. They did it. That third month qualification and later found out really just everything that they were going through. But it was just a time that really brought them closer together. And when Tim and Emily share their story, they've shared their story, story so many times. They said, but thank goodness for our business. Thank goodness for our network marketing business. You know, thank goodness that we had the time and we had the, the income, the residual income coming in that would continue to pay us and pay our bills as we were taking this time off and give us the time that we needed as a family really to heal, but gave us the resources that we need to um, not only survive, but to thrive. And um, I love what they say. I want you guys to type that in the comments or put it in the notes. The time to look for a plan B is not when you need one. And I hope that's speaking to some of you today. Maybe would speak to some of your prospects. The time to look for a plan B is not when you need one. When you think about, could you imagine if they were going through all that and then they're trying to think, oh gosh, we need an extra income. What do we do now? And then you're trying to deal with the tragedy and also trying to deal with just providing for your family. And then you really are in survival mode, right? So the time to look for a plan B is not when you need one. If you follow on me on social media, you probably saw about a week ago that I shared a really raw post with you. And I just shared, hey, you might not have seen me here as often as um, you normally would have. But, you know, I had to take a little time to heal myself. I went through some really hard things over the past few months. Um, and so, but you know, here I am, I'm still sharing with you and loving on you and, um, it's my passion. It's, it's, it's what I do. And I find it's very healing and therapeutic for me too. So, you know, but I always think in those moments, even when, you know, back in the day when I first had Gabriel and I really had a challenging postpartum experience, he had an unknown tongue tie. So he wasn't eating. Um, he wasn't sleeping when people are like newborns sleep all day long. They're so easy. Not my newborn experience. It was crazy. Plus being a first time mom and balancing everything too, right? Busy business, all these things. Um, I just remembered literally just being in this survival mode, but I was like, thank God we had built an incredible business to where I could take that time and adjust. And that really is the beauty of our business. That's the beauty. If you really take the time to put in the work and you give it the time that it takes to build something substantial, really, it goes with you in life wherever you are in whatever season of life that you're in. And, you know, unlike traditional work, right? Unlike a traditional job, if you build this business right, regardless of what season that you're in, it continues to pay you for the long term. It's very different than the day-to-day -day trading hours for dollars, right? If you don't go to work, chances are you don't get paid. And if you do, then you have a certain amount of time that you're allotted off. But when you're at work, right, in a traditional job, you're not able to say, you know what, I just wanna work an hour today, right? I mean, most of you, most of us, we're not able to do that. But this business really gives us the freedom and flex flexibility to live a life on our terms and that's so powerful so I think about how um, when I was going through those challenging times and as I'm going through this challenging time I am so thankful that I built the foundation of this business to allow me to enjoy the journey right the joys and celebrations of our family's life but also to be present for those in need and in times of need even when I need some of that time myself so you know, I want to kind of look at too, you know, in the same respect as we look at a traditional job, I want to talk to you a little bit just on that point there for a moment. There's a certain level of excellence that's required when you work for somebody else. I want you to think on that for a second. There's a certain level of excellence that's required when you work for somebody else. Regardless of what you're going through. Now, I don't want to say major sicknesses. I'm not diminishing that. There are times where people go through hard things. There's people watching that had to deal with cancers and life-threatening illnesses and deaths and all of those things. And we know in work there's provisions for those things, right? But I'm talking about your day-to-day. -day. Let's just say you have a bad day, okay? Let's say you got in a fight with your spouse. You had a bad day. You don't feel like showing up to work. Your boss, nine times out of ten, unless you have a really good boss, doesn't care about that fight that just went on. They don't care about your personal life. 
They care that if you're scheduled from nine to five, that you show up, that you work with excellence, that you leave your problems at the door, right? And you get the job done that they're paying you to do. I would love to get to a point in our business, right, with our teams, where we see everybody show up with that same level of excellence. Now, that's not to say that we're going to show up nine to five, because that's the beauty of our business. We can do this part time and really design a life that we love. But what if we had that same commitment, that same level of excellence that we showed up every single day to work and we worked hard and we did the job that we set out to do, even when we were having a really tough day? See, that's how you build the foundation like I have to where if you do go through something that is challenging, that is devastating, that is a tragedy, right? We're all going to have to go through those things where we get sick or somebody gets sick or, you know, things around us are in disarray. But if we put in the hard work, if we put in that level of excellence, we can build that foundation for the long term. The business promises us, right? We promise people the time and the financial freedom, but we also have to be willing to put in a level of effort and consistent effort over time if we want to see those promises. So how do we do it? You know, how do we, and again, I'm talking to people just the day to day, the everyday challenges, I had a bad day, I'm going through a rough season, I'm super stressed out at work, I'm having challenges in a relationship, I haven't been feeling my best, um, the kids are driving me nuts, so... How do I balance all of this stuff? How do I build my business with excellence? What to do when I'm going through? How do I keep on keeping on? These are a few of the things that I wrote down as I was thinking back in that season of my life where I was a new mom and you all know moms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give me a heart if you've been there and you're like, oh yeah, I remember being a new mom. That was the craziest time of my life. Anybody else? I mean, give me a heart so I know I'm not the only one out there. That it is tough, right? That adjustment I'm sure from one to two is tough too, but that first one, you're like, what the heck? You're wondering like, what do I feed them? Oh my gosh, do I wake them up to change them? I'm not quite sure. They just crapped. What do I do? Oh crap, right? Um, <laughs> what do I wash their clothes in? Um, do I formula or breastfeed? And then when they're eating solids, what foods do I give them first? And literally you feel like you're about ready to lose your mind. That paired with the hormones, especially if you're breastfeeding, um, that whole adjustment of, you know, if you worked or if you've got a business of now I'm a mom and and how do I, you know, how am I the best wife and mom and this and that and the other? Oh my goodness, you could go crazy if you let it, right? Oh my, and are they still breathing? Katie said, yes, literally, like at night, isn't that scary? And you're literally like, are they breathing? And you're like watching them breathe. Yes, you guys know, right? You know. So I remember thinking about those crazy days and I remember thinking, Man, I really had to put a lot on hold with my business. But again, I was so blessed because, oh my gosh, Rhonda had four kids, five years and under. Rhonda, you deserve a star. A star times five. No, four. You have four kids. <laughs> um, four star experience. There you go. Um, you know, I remember just thinking back and go, man, you know, I really had to put some things on hold. But thank God I built a solid foundation. And um, man, I was tired. I wasn't sleeping. Um, and you know what was crazy during that time? My business exploded. My business exploded. Literally, my leaders, if I look back, record-breaking. I did not even have a moment where my volume dipped or my sales dipped. It exploded. That was a record-breaking year for us, and I've never looked back. Every single year. Do you know my business has grown month over month, year after year, and has never turned back? So I was looking and I was thinking, how did that happen during that time if I wasn't able to be as present myself, maybe as usual? What have I been able to do over you know, this recent time when times have been tough, but I've got a huge multi-billion dollar global business? These are a few things and I want you to write these down. The first thing is, is I established hours of operation and still have that in place today. Really, it's establishing boundaries for your time, but also making sure that, you know, your team knows that you're also present and you're available, even if it's just an hour during the day. I use something called Time Trade, which I'm in no way affiliated with them, but basically it's just an online scheduler where I'll decide for the week or for the day when I want to be available. And you know what? If I have a week where maybe I'm traveling or I'm on vacation with my family, I don't put any times up. 
But if I have a week where I'm more available than others, I put those times up. Typically for me right now, when I make myself available for three-way calls for my team or for coaching, is during Gabriel's nap time. He naps every day between one and four. And so my team will see most days, Monday through Thursday, that I have times between one and four available. Friday, I do a little self-care. I take some time for me, but I'll do things kind of, you know, um, per my availability. And um, there are days that I take off. I do not do business at all on Sundays ever. Ever, ever, ever. The only thing I do is I do um, a training call. We do a 30 minute training call at night. That's it, but that's after my son's in bed. And so I establish those hours of operation so I'm never in a place where I'm burnt out or resentful toward my business. And by the way, having something like a time trade where you can schedule with people is powerful because then it's not like, when are you available? When are you available? And by the time you go around the circle, right? It's 20 minutes that you've wasted to even nail down a time. So I made myself available. In some seasons and some days it's more and sometimes it's less, but I always make myself available for those income producing activities for my team. And just like I would for a boss or for a, an employer, I show up to work and I give people my best and I don't talk about my issues and I don't talk about my problems. I do the work that I am setting forth to do and I do it with excellence. The second thing that I do is I um, communicate expectations. Look, when I was unavailable after first having my son and I was in the hospital or, um, you know, during times where maybe I'm traveling or, uh, or I'm un unavailable for whatever reason, personal reasons, whatever, health reasons, etc. Then I'll let my team know. I'll communicate with them, but I'll also make sure that they have some sort of plan in place. So for example, my upline's my mom and I'll say, Chris is available for your calls. Here's her email. Here's her phone number. Here's her time trade where you can schedule her. This is how to reach her. Always make sure that you communicate expectations with other people because if you just drop off the face of the planet, nobody knows and they have no form of support, then they're going to start thinking you're a little flaky. Make sure that you've communicated expectations. And the third thing is, it kind of goes with it, is setting up systems and really empowering leaders to lead. You know, so for example, when um, my personal team, they've got a page, they've got a Facebook page where they communicate with other people and they can get answers to their questions there. And I always tell them, please post here first. Post here first. Seek three before asking me. Ask somebody else. Go on the company website. Go ahead and post on the team page before coming to me because we establish that community. So they're not always dependent on me, but they can depend and rely on one another. And we've built such a great community that way as well. For my leaders, my top leaders, we have a little text loop. There's about 15 of us on there where they can just text something out. And nine times out of 10, I don't answer because I don't have to. Somebody else, they fill in, they chime in and they answer. And again, we've built such a powerful community and such great collaboration and culture too. And you know what I love about that, guys? Literally, we formed such a bond with our leaders that when I was having a tough day or when I was having a tough season, they came together and they're like, girl, we got your back. We love you. We support you. We're going to post a call on Sunday nights on our team page. You don't even have to worry about it. We are here for you. And we've empowered leaders. We created an unstoppable team culture. And I tell you what, our team is unstoppable. We grow again, month over month, year after year through season after season, because we've all got each other's backs. So if you really work on establishing systems and you communicate well to your team and you equip and you empower your leaders, no matter what you're going through, man, in those seasons, you can grow through them too. And it's so powerful. You know, just, I would say those are the three things, hours of operation, communicating expectations, you know, making sure that you've got some support in place for your team. Where can they find the answers? And the third thing is setting up systems and equipping and empowering leaders. You know, ask them to help, ask them to do the presentation, ask them to do the event. Ask them to train live on your team page. Um, it is so powerful too. Um, you know, a few side tips that I will say is where you can outsource where necessary when I couldn't afford to. I actually hired somebody to clean my house once a month and eventually twice a month and now once a week. And um, I just thought I can't afford not to. I would rather have a free Saturday to build my business when I had a full-time job and all these um, different expectations. But I thought, um, you know, or all these different commitments, I thought, you know what? I'd rather pay somebody to come in for a Saturday and clean. It'll give me the time to work my business. 
and um, I was able to pour really back in and, and build a nice foundation. So again, it's like, can I afford two or can I afford not to, right? Um, and that really helped me to build a nice foundation there. Even if it's a couple hours, have somebody come over and watch the kiddos. Maybe your kids, children are not napping. You're maybe not as lucky as me. And um, that you could have some time to have somebody for an hour or two, to give you an hour even a day on weekdays to work your business too. And instead of spending that money, maybe it's money that's reinvested back into your business to. The last thing that I'll say, I know that there's some of you guys that are going through really hard things out there. And first and foremost, if I can pray for you, I've seen so many comments about those of you that are going through really hard things, sickness, disease, etc. First of all, I want you to know that after this, my husband, Phil, and I, we're going to go through, we'll read it and we'll commit to pray for you guys. If you have something you want us to pray for, feel free to share it. We're happy to pray for you. Um, but give yourself the time and um, find yourself the help that you need to heal. You know, if it's something physical in your body, find the right doctor. If it's something emotional that you're dealing with, find the right counselor. Um, allow yourself that time and find the help that you need to heal. Reach out to somebody who you know that is powerful in prayer and ask them to pray and find that trusted friend that you can talk to and talk to them and share your heart. Because I tell you what, guys, we are not meant to do life alone. You know, when we get in that place where we're isolated, and we feel alone. It is so hard. It is so hard. But when you're sur surrounded by a community of people who love you and will pour into you and speak life into you and pray for you, man, those relationships make all the difference in the world. So what do you do when you're go going through? You keep on keeping on. You do it with excellence, guys. And um, you give yourself the grace that you need to get through that season. But remember, this business is such a powerful business and it's such a beautiful business. You know, I shared how my girlfriends, my sisters were there for me during those tough times. Man, the beauty has given me the friendships, but it's also given me that flexibility, the time and the resources that I need to focus on the most powerful and most important things in my life. I want to encourage you to build the foundation. Is it easy? No. Is it worth it? You bet. Now we can live more. We can give more. We can love our lives even so much more. I always say I can do anything for a short period of time that will produce the long-term rewards that I desire and that my family deserves. And that is my wish for all of you too. Guys, I hope something today would... Um, resonate with your souls and with your spirits. Um, Fran, yes, my husband does the Monday morning prayer calls. We do a Power to Prosper prayer call. They're Monday mornings um, at 11 a.m. Eastern time. It's to equip and empower people in the marketplace. Sometimes we do it together, but a lot of times he does that now. Again, that's my way of kind of, uh, you know, finding some good balance for my life. He's got an awesome ministry. So if you could follow him on Facebook, Phil Robbins, R-O-B-B-I-N-S. Um, he does those live on his Facebook page Mondays. We'd love to pray for you there. Um, but this business has been such a blessing to us, guys. And that is my wish for all of you, too. Um, again, uh, I hope this blesses you. If you think it would bless somebody else, tag them below or you can share it on your pages. This is Sarah. And um, I just love you guys so much. I hope you guys have a great day. God bless. And goodbye for now. Rock on, rock stars. You rock.